so I got the Commodore 64. I got a book on 6502 machine language programming, which I'd never heard of, and um, jumped in. Uh, I was uh, asked if they had something in mind, and uh, their suggestion was, uh, how about something with a bow and arrow? <laughs> no that, problem. Not a problem. I guess that's how games were made back then. Let's just do something with a bow and arrow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, you know, we got the guy down the hall is all, already working on the Frisbee game, so why don't you do the bow and arrow? And... Um, Okay, well, I'm I'm much more and always have been a movie buff than uh, than a gamer, so naturally I'm thinking cinematically, uh, bow and arrows, Robin Hood, Forest, uh, and it's a game, so I guess monsters. So we got a forest with monsters and a bow and arrow. Uh, but I didn't know anything about machine language, so it was all the first month or, or so was all about uh, you know, trial and error, trial and error, and asking a few questions of some of the other guys. I remember my, my first question was, how do you do a delay? <laughs> all totally Greek to me at the time. But a month or so, I had uh, laid out some grass and some trees, and... The Commodore 64 had this uh, this revolutionary aspect of sprites, mm -hmm. that little independently uh, uh, programmable uh, uh, thing that uh, you can make out of 16 pixels. And uh, and I had this brainstorm. Well, if I make a couple of big trees on the background and then make slightly smaller trees out of sprites, which I can move. I can make it kind of scroll in 3D. <laughs> so uh, you basically created parallax scrolling. Well, I certainly hadn't seen it myself, and uh, from the reactions I got from people walking by, I guess it wasn't uh, wasn't all that widespread at the time. But That's see, I'm thinking, I'm thinking this is not a computer. This is not, uh, you know, I, this is I, I'm not at a bar playing pong. This is a movie. I make movies. This is what I think. I think in terms of movies, and movies have depth and motion, and so you have to do that. And so I just keep plotting away on, um, you know, putting the uh, putting the XOX and the AO5 and uh, and, 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 and branching to uh, uh, whatever the hell all this uh, mnemonic uh, nonsense I was I was learning uh, led to, and. Uh, as I uh, always pun, bit by bit, it built up, and uh, I got a few monsters in there, and uh, and of course, my you know my entire life uh, prior to that being a musician, it's got to be full of music because movies are back at least back then were full of music. I mean, music was the emotion of the movie, so you had to. I had to. Figure out the SID chip, and um, <laughs> that was a chore because uh, you've got, but you've got basically a whistle, a kazoo, and a and a some sort of ship alarm sound. <laughs> Not a whole lot to work with. Yeah, so I got to make music with it, but you know, uh, music is a is an amazing thing that uh, lends itself to uh, to so many. Uh, uh, channels and, 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 and possibilities that uh, if you listen to it today, you know, by comparison, it sounds a little weird, but at the time, um, yeah, yeah, the time, I, time I was, was great. Now, you said you were a musician before becoming a programmer? Yeah, yeah, I picked up a guitar at the age of 13, and um, uh, I'd already um, become enamored with the motion picture soundtracks like El Cid and King of Kings and the whole Nicholas Rosa catalog and that, that sort of sound. So I, uh, then, that, then, you know, one band led to another and blah, blah, blah. And uh, so I playing guitar for the next uh, 20, 25 years. So you were, you were right at home then when it came to uh, having to write music for your game. Yeah, everything in... Uh, 
you know, with one or two exceptions, just uh, almost filler, uh, everything in Forbidden Forest and pretty much every other game I wrote, I, it, it was music I had written uh, in some cases years before. Um, the, um, just to mention uh, another game, the main theme for uh, Aztec Challenge, which followed, uh, yes. was the very first melody I ever wrote. Oh. Like 14 years old. So, that I, I get my inspiration from my my own history. <laughs> so, I, I remember Aztec Challenge very fondly as well. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, I do get uh, those two uh, been forced in that one. I, I do get the uh, majority of my email. Now, one of the things you did in Forbidden Forest 2 that I think was was possibly a first for the time was the way you you actually changed the volume of sound as uh, as the creatures got closer to you, more specifically the bees. So as the bees got closer, the sound became closer or louder, uh, as if it was moving towards you. That that was definitely not something you would see normally in in a game. Well, that's good. I'm, I'm glad to hear that I, I, I was forgotten. But um, as I as I said, I'm not making video games. I'm trying to make a movie, and so I'm trying to. Do, anytime I, I find uh, a, a a a trick, and being lazy, I always try to find the simplest trick possible that I can do something that has a, a really obvious effect. Now, if I just put this number here and and uh, you know delay it for ten seconds and then put it over here, and you know people can actually perceive what what has happened here, and that's uh, that, that's what I always go for. It's like playing the guitar. My programming is, is very largely ad lib. You know, I'm not a not a hardcore programmer. I just I, I tinker until it works. Yeah, well, it was amazing that you had kind of stumbled across a couple of things that were, I mean, you know, I don't remember games having a, a day and night cycle at that point, which yours had, and, and it, certainly that dynamic sound was something that uh, was very impressive and, and quite different for the time. Do you remember the the kind of the inspiration for the, I, I don't know if I, you call it a victory dance or, or what you what you would call it, but when after you would defeat all the enemies in an area of course the music would change and you'd get sort of a victory tune and a little dance what was the uh the inspiration behind that was it uh, just you wanted to reward the player for finishing the level or what was what was your thought there i think the dance i mean uh, the concept of giving a reward at, at certain points of you no know, which Generally, it was like a pop-up score or, a, you know, a, a balloon bubble with 200 or 300 or something, something like that would happen, or, or just a sign that say, "Good, you made the, you're going to the second level." I think my inspiration was, uh, again, in keeping with me, I had the music first, and the music was another uh, old piece that I had written years before. Uh, originally called Circus and because it had this kind of a calliope uh, you know a three by four thing going in the background um, and it lent itself well to the uh, Sid chip because of the, the these three note uh, uh, sort of fugue thing uh, one going da 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 and the other playing a tune, and the other playing a bum bum bum, a calliope bass. And the music itself says dance. <laughs> you got it. So, and what's the guy going to do? Stand there? Right. <laughs> and and again, it's uh, going for simplicity. I just took every move that it was already programmed for the archer and just ran them all together at random very quickly. And that was the dance. Right. <laughs> so I didn't have to do any extra work and, and uh, people seemed to enjoy it. <laughs> 